Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Liam, this is my hobby room, and welcome back to the Gunpla Network for another review of a model kit. Imagine that! Today we're going to be taking a look at the HGUC Comfer from War in the Pocket. This is a really, really cool high-grade model kit that I've been wanting to get my hands on for a while now. I was given this kit by Canadian Gundam, that's a Canadian Gunpla hobby retailer. You can use the code Gunpla Network and get yourself something fun to build. If you missed the unboxing video and that's something you want to check out, you can use the card at the top here to go to that video and take a look. Take a look at what this kit comes with. Otherwise, well, what are we standing around here? You big silly, let's go take a look at the kit. <laughs> Here is the Comfort all put together. Uh, this was a fun mobile suit. It's very different from what I'm used to putting together. So a lot of pieces went together in ways that I was like, ah, that's new, that's fun. Uh, there were a couple seam lines to close, uh, actually quite a few, but mostly on the weapons and accessories and stuff like that. Lots of mold lines though. That's one thing for this kit, covered in mold lines, which you know, is a model kit. That's, it has to be molded, so there, there are going to be mold lines. Uh, easy enough to sand down, obviously. Uh, so yeah, closing up the seam lines, uh, sanding out those mold lines. Um, there are a few that I think it might just be easier to sand down details and just put some plastic card details down over top. And then once it's all painted, you'll never you'll never know the difference. Uh, and I'll talk about those a little more in depth when we take a look a closer look at the accessories. Now, as far as color molding goes, a lot of it is molded in color. Uh, there's just all the all of the thrusters are going to need a yellow bell on the inside of them uh, instead of the gray that they're molded with. There are a few on the pauldron and the chest there that do have the correct color, but there's you'll have to do some painting. But you know, I'm going to be painting the whole thing anyways, so I'm not really concerned about that. Uh, the ones on the legs will have to be masked off. There's some thrusters there. Uh, the articulation's pretty great. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to that section. But overall. The kit is really, really cool, and if you're a fan of War in the Pocket, or if you just like the design, or if you're up for trying something a little bit different, say if you're building a lot of standard Gundam-type mobile suits, then I think you're really going to get a good kick out of this one. So the Comfort comes with a lot of cool accessories, uh, and when I say a lot, I mean there are a lot. You've got two large bazookas, they're identical, uh, really, really well molded, really cool looking, interesting design. Uh, you've got a trigger that swings up like this, or a handle that swings up like that uh, when it's in storage mode. You have this little like scope thing <laughs> here that's cool, the little viewfinder. Uh, and then there is the back of the bazooka here. Uh, this is the one part here and the barrel I think are a little odd. Uh, so inside here there's no detail, it's just, you know, a, a molded circle. Uh, here there's kind of the illusion of a barrel, if you paint it black I'm sure it'll be fine. But yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, when you get these you will have to close a seam line on them, so you just stick those together with some cement obviously. So those are the bazookas. We'll put those over here for now. Next up you have the Comfer's Twin Shotguns. Uh, these things are pretty cool. There is no articulation on them, even though they, it kind of does look like they have like a moving, uh, whatever you call the pump action part of a pump action shotgun. I don't know what that is. I don't know, I don't know about this stuff. I know about plastic models though, and that's what this is, so I can tell you that both of these are going to need some seam lines removed, uh, and uh, these are pretty easy. Um, th there's not a whole lot to worry about when removing those seam lines, not a whole lot of detail on that part that you'll be sanding. Uh, they do come in a few different pieces. One thing that's cool about these kits, or these uh, these weapons, is that you can remove the handles here, and you can, as you can see, it's a, uh, uh, it's a handle with a stock or a handle without it, and the kit actually gives you two um, additional pairs of both, so you could have both the shotguns with its, um, you know, stockless look <laughs> without the stock, I don't know what you call that, as uh, so you can have them like that, which is nice, or you can have two with the stocks as well. Now the Comfort does normally have one with a stock and one without, so that's how I'm just gonna leave them for now, uh, but anyways, those are the shotguns. You also get two Sturmfaust grenades, and if you're familiar with the uh, with the lore at all, these are fired from the hip, and uh, there's a little trigger thing here. Uh, they have a little peg and a mounting bracket that you can put them on, and those just clip into the side of the leg, uh, like so. There's a little hole here, and you just plug that right in. And then you can position it however you like. Another interesting piece of equipment is the chain mine whip. Chain mine, I think it's called. <laughs> and it comes with this, uh, so each of these little mines on here are two pieces snapped together, and then there is a little handle here, and this handle has a peg, and that peg connects only into the right fist. Uh, the left fist does not have a little connector. And then the end one comes with this little uh, anchor point here. There's an included wire that connects all of these mines and then just inserts into this handle here, and uh, I feel felt like it was a little too long. 
Uh, so I just cut off a little bit there. I don't remember what it said in the instructions. I wasn't really looking, to be honest. So anyways, this is a really cool accessory. Um, it is a little bit difficult to get it to pose well, but I haven't had any problems with its weight and the kit holding it up. So it can do pretty much everything you needed to do with this mine if you wanted to recreate any scenes from the, from the OVA series. You also get two beam savers here. They're just the regular sized old style ones. Uh, and then you get a very interesting looking beam saber hilt with this kind of like a, a slanted pommel, which I really like, I think it's cool. Uh, you cannot store these hilts anywhere on the kit and that actually brings me to an interesting point. Uh, you can store pretty much everything except for these. Uh, so just these guys you can store on the kit, and then, uh, you know, the other the other shotgun you can have in hand or something, but uh, these two weapons, there's really nowhere to put them, so. And then you got a bunch of hands. Isn't that nice? It's nice when they give you lots of extra hands. I like that. So you get a splayed hand for the left-hand side. Ooh, look at that. Very dramatic looking. Looks good. Uh, you have two generic holding hands. Um, I say generic, but it's not entirely generic. These are for the beam sabers and, uh, and slash or. This right one can be used for the chain mine, but the left one cannot hold it very well, so just keep that in mind. And and then you have two trigger fingers. Not often you get one for both hands, which is great, but that's because you can dual wield shotguns on this kit. That's kind of fun. You can whip out a shoddy like John Gotti. It's a pretty dated reference, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm just gonna move. Keep rolling, keep on moving, okay? All right. So before we continue to articulation, I just want to point out some of the areas that are going to need some painting if you're just going for color accuracy. Uh, so there are these little vents all over the kit that need to be painted. So there's two on the chest, one on the crotch, I think there's one on the butt. Oh yeah, there's one on the butt too. Uh, all of the thruster bells are going to need yellow inside of them, and these ones on the legs will have to be painted. So on this pauldron spike here, there's supposed to be a white band going around it. You do get a foil sticker for that, if that's something you want to use. There's also going to be a white band going around the command horn antenna here. Uh, you get a sticker for that again, if you want to use it, go for it. Uh, and then the mono eye is a sticker, and I'm not a huge fan of those, so what I'm probably going to do is um, saw out this piece and put a little ball joint in, a ball joint with like a little peg on it, and just um, attach them eye to the end of that peg so it can kind of look around like it's supposed to and the vents here in the helmet are also going to need some paint I think gray and yellow or something like that but just a little bit just to give it a little bit of color just a little bit of color hey eh? yeah all right the bazookas are gonna need some paint on these uh, viewfinder scopes here so both sides of those will need a bit of paint uh, and also these little holes in the back of the backpack I just think it would look better if you just drilled them out so as far as seam lines go on the kit, wow, there's a lot of them. And uh, there's a lot of mold lines that needed to be sanded out as well to give it kind of that, uh, you know, professional look. So what I wanted to do is just quickly go over some of those seam lines. Uh, you sandwich these on here, you're gonna need to fill that seam line in. Uh, underneath there, the thigh pieces do have a molded line detail in there, so you don't really have to worry about that. That's kind of nice. Uh, let's see what else is there. Oh, yeah. Uh, there is a seam going down the back of the legs here, uh, but it's molded detail all the way up until the bottom. So the bottom part is the part you'll have to use some cement and clean that up with because uh, it just looks a little unsightly. These Sturmfaust grenades, it just goes down the top. The seam lines right on the very top there. Very easy to close, not, not difficult at all. There's a really deep mold line going down the backs of these uh, arm guards here, so I sanded that out. There's a seam line going down the middle of both pauldrons, which is less than ideal because there's so many different vertices and details that you have to sand around to kind of make those work. So I had to do, um, I didn't have to do very much reshaping. As you can see, there's no polyester or epoxy putty on here, just the regular lacquer base putty. Uh, you'll also be closing seam lines on the shoulder the horn can be sharpened a little bit more, which I've done. Uh, there's mold lines on these um, these pipes here, and they're they're really glaring. So uh, I just took some sandpaper to those, as well as these areas here. You want to be careful you don't actually accidentally sand off that detail. And there is a seam line going all the way around uh, both shotguns. Uh, on the stock, there is a pretty big mold line that's going to be sanded. That's going to need some sanding. Uh, other than that, though, these are really really simple. And now it's time to go over articulation. So the articulation for this model kit is pretty basic. I'm not gonna go over all the basic stuff because that's so redundant and you guys have seen it a million times, but I will go over some of the uh, more interesting parts of the articulation and anything that I think stands out and should be, you know, should be mentioned. Uh, the head mine is very loose. That's something you might wanna keep track of. I don't know if y'all are like that. I don't know if y'alls are like that. <laughs> 
I don't know why I said that. Uh, so, but it's very articulated, moves all the way around there. The arms do have a pretty good range of motion. Uh, they go forward and backwards pretty well, and they can spin all the way around here. And then you've got some, you know, the regular spins and stuff like that. Also pretty good bend, but not full 90 degrees. So if that's something you need, then, uh, you know, well, there's that. Uh, the pauldrons wiggle around, they're on ball joints. It does kind of feel like an odd choice. Uh, waist goes all the way around, that's pretty cool. Uh, don't need to really uh, harp on that too much. The legs, mine are quite stiff, which is nice, I guess. Uh, they go backwards all the way, forwards all the way, there's lots of bends, uh, but, 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 uh, it doesn't bend very far, and you'll notice that the thruster runs into the leg, so that's the only bend you're gonna get. The ankle uh, bends back and forth and has some wiggle room, and then there's no bend in the feet. But that's essentially the whole model kit. There's really not that much to it, um, but what it does very well is stand there and look awesome. So I really, really do like this kit, and I cannot wait to paint it and put all the decals on there, take a look at it, and I'll be doing that on my channel, Liam's Hobby Room. So you can check that out if you want to see me paint this kit from start to finish and talk about the modeling process and tips and tricks and all that fun stuff. Thanks so, so much for watching, everybody. Thank you for clicking on my video. Once again, my name is Liam from Liam's Hobby Room. If you want to check out some start to finish builds of model kits, uh, some custom projects, also learn some tips and tricks about model making, and have a little laugh along the way, head on over to Liam's Hobby Room, which is my channel, and I'll see you there. Make sure to subscribe to the Gunpla Network for lots of awesome Gunpla content, and I will see you guys next time on Liam's Hobby Room.